phase of huge changes on this planet. So throughout this fall, by the end of this year and ongoing for several years, we will experience uh, enormous shifts uh, in our societies. And what we notice is an, a polarization of the extremes. So the closer we get to the light, the darkest the shadow becomes. Um, so through the polarity negative, positive, yin, yang, which is actually the foundation of our universe. So the two opposites that also um, complete each other. And what we are witnessing right now has never happened uh, in the history of humanity. Um, what we are witnessing right now is the ascension of humanity with planet Earth to a higher consciousness. For thousands upon thousands of years, humanity was in third dimensional consciousness, which is ego consciousness. And what we're experiencing right now is a massive awakening of humanity across the globe. People are waking up to their true divine nature and this is uh, the first time it happens in the history of humanity. So in third dimensional consciousness, um, society was based on division and separation. Separation between humans, separation between humans and nature, separation between humans and God through religions that put God outside of ourselves. So a society based on hierarchy, a sort of pyramidal structure, with the, the weak at the bottom, the strong on the top, um, the dominated and the dominant. And this entire structure is about to collapse right now. And we are concretely uh, experiencing that right now. We are awakening to this higher consciousness um, in order to ascend with the planet Earth to fourth and fifth dimension, which is a heart-centered um, consciousness and the consciousness of unity. So we are moving away from the age of Pisces and entering the age of Aquarius. Pisces is um, the monk meditating alone in, in his cave to reach enlightenment, it's isolation. Um, it's also ruled by Neptune, which is illusion and disillusion. Aquarius is the group, the tribe, um, it's collaboration, partnership. And so the way I see things is that we are slowly um, entering this end of the phase of uh, the age of Pisces, which means we have, been, uh, we have gone inside of ourselves, we have gone within to find God, we have understood that we are God um, and that we are creation itself because Pisces is also the, the ocean of consciousness. And through um, the age of Aquarius, we have the opp opportunity to actually concretely experience what is uh, this unity, this interdependence between all living things. So everything we have learned, we are going to be able to, um, to fully um, build it in our lives. So this is why we are going to start building communities. This is why we are going to start um, uh, founding new systems based on mutual aid and collaboration and partnership. Um, Aquarius is also technology and it's also the future. So it's future to technology. So technologies um, that are sustainable, that are much more respectful of nature. So. In this preparation phase that we are in right now, this preparation phase to the entering in this age of Aquarius, it is really time for us to um, find our soul families, to find our tribes, to start um, creating inten intentional communities, um, uh, self-sustainable eco-villages and so on. But what we've experienced on planet Earth before was um, teachers, spiritual masters, such as Jesus or Buddha or others, that would come to, to teach us about our true divine nature because they embodied this enlightenment or this awakened state. But apart from a handful of these teachers and masters, all the rest of humanity would stay in this unconscious uh, and asleep state. But now we're witnessing an entire planet waking up to uh, its true divine nature, so we don't need any more uh, any masters, any gurus anymore because we are becoming our own gurus, we are becoming our own masters. We don't need a priest or a temple between us and the cosmos because we have understood 
that uh, our temple is our body and that everything is within us. In order for this new consciousness to emerge, the old must die. And so the planet has entered this phase of cleansing and purging. And um, not all souls are ready to make this shift. So in the coming years there are a lot of souls that will, uh, that will exit. And we should not judge them because everyone has his own journey. Um, and in order to build this new society, this new world that is in, in accordance with this new consciousness, um, the system has to collapse. And it will. And um, there's still a possibility for a third, uh, third world war. But uh, the thing that is quite imminent is the, the collapse of the economy. Um, for now, we are not aware of it because they're boosting the economy for the US elections, but it's all going to crash. And it will be ongoing at least until the 2020s. And it's going to be probably worse than, um, than what we experienced in the 1930s during the Great Depression. And we should not be afraid uh, of what's happening. Um, it's very important just to stay grounded and centered during these times. And just be aware that um, in order to rebuild something, there must be destruction first. And let's look, just look at the Big Bang. Um, it's creation out of chaos. There is a trap in which we fall very easily when we start to uh, awaken to the lies that have been served to humanity for thousands of years. And that is to stay focused on the dark forces that are behind the deception. And this actually uh, maintains us in, in a vibration of fear and powerlessness that actually serves completely these same forces because they want us to believe that they have much more power than they actually have. How could they ever have power over the immortal, multidimensional beings that we are? They just can't. So when I came across these teachings several years ago, I instantly felt a feeling of freedom, uh, release and empowerment. So, our, so there are an infinite number of parallel realities that coexist at the same time because there is only one moment in creation and it is the present moment. What we call future or past are only concepts of the human mind. So this means that what we call past lives or future lives actually coexist uh, right here, right now, at the same time as we are living the, our present life. So through our third dimensional brain, we perceive time as linear. But it's actually an illusion because we are the ones creating time. And as I, I just, said, just said before, the, the way we are able to navigate through time, so for example to experience past lives and future lives, is because we can navigate through our consciousness, through these timelines through, for example, hypnotic uh, regression or shamanic journeying, journeying. And we are the ones creating time and um, time is connected to movement. And the best way to explain this is to compare it to the way the cinema works. So, for example, on a film reel we have frozen images and when we put them together and roll the film, it creates the illusion of movement. And our reality actually works exactly the same way. So every uh, frozen image is like a time frame, a different timeline, so a different parallel reality. And we shift from parallel reality to parallel reality every second, which creates this uh, illusion of a linear time and movement. And what determines uh, in what reality we are is uh, our vibration, and our vibration is determined by the thoughts and emotions we hold, and uh, it's all determined also by the choices we make in life, so our free will. All these parallel realities are layered on each other and we can visualize it as um, an image gallery, like an accordion image gallery that we can sometimes see on websites. So they are all layered on each other and we can navigate through these different timelines. So I'll give you an example. Let's say there's a, a student that falls in love with a girl and um, a couple of months later, he receives uh, a scholarship to go to study abroad. Uh, and the, the girl cannot go with him. So he faces a choice. Either he stays with the girl and continues to live his love story, or he leaves 
and goes to get his scholarship um, in another in another country. So let's say he chooses to leave. So he leaves and then uh, eventually he meets another woman and he gets married and, and has children. Well, there is a parallel reality where there's another version of this man um, where he made the opposite choice. So the choice to stay and, and actually get married with his first love and, and, and build a family, etc. etc. And this happens for every choice we make in our, throughout our lives. So for every choice we make, there is a parallel reality where we made the opposite choice. So there is an infinity of parallel realities or timelines. And in these realities, we have different versions of planet Earth. So let's, let's look at it as a scale with the two extre extremes. So on one side of the scale, we have a version of planet Earth where humanity is destroyed in a nuclear war. On the other side of the scale, we have the other extreme, which uh, New Agers often call the Golden Age or the New Earth, which is basically paradise on Earth, where humans live in communities um, closer to nature, um, there is harmony, peace, no one is left behind, there is abundance for all. And by the way, abundance is the natural state of the universe. Um, just take a look at what we've done to Mother Earth and see that she continues to give to us abundantly and unconditionally. We've only been, been programmed to believe in scarcity. And scarcity, this belief, um, triggers the survival mechanism, it triggers the greed, uh, the desire for power, everything that is connected to the 3D consciousness. And as a side note, um, I've heard a lot of people say yeah, but living in communities close to nature, we've already tried that in the 60s and the 70s. It didn't work, you know, through the hippies and the peace and love movement, the psychedelic movement, etc. Well, the thing they don't understand is that actually what happened in the 60s and the 70s is that th those souls were actually coming to the planet to anchor that new consciousness. It, it, wasn't, it was never meant to work at the time. It was simply meant to anchor the consciousness in order to, for future generations to be able to concretely, practically um, put that uh, into place. So between these two extremes, there's an infinity of parallel realities. And in order to, to know on what side of the scale we are leaning and so in what reality we are, we need to start uh, being become aware of our thoughts, our emotions, and also the choices we make. So, if we focus um, negatively, we are leading towards the negative polarity. If we focus positively, then we are then we are lead, leaning towards the the positive um, polarity. So, it's really important right now, more than ever, to decide on which side of the scale we want to be. And, uh, and start focusing, for example, on what works instead of what doesn't work. So, for example, if we focus continuously on the news, that it's always negative, uh, instead of focusing on what works and the solutions. It's not the world that is changing. We are changing ourselves and we shift to parallel realities to parallel realities that reflect the change we made inside of ourselves. So, again, I really insist on this, during these chaotic times, it's very important to um, be centered and decide on which side of the scale we want to be. And um, when we choose individually, we impact directly the collective consciousness. So this doesn't mean to turn a blind eye on what's happening on this planet. It doesn't mean to turn a blind eye on the suffering, the pain, the fear, the darkness that is still present on our planet. It simply means seeing, accepting, integrating the shadow in order to transcend it. And how do we transcend the shadow on this planet? Well, by seeing, accepting, integrating the shadow within ourselves. So, by lending ourselves this loving hand in order for us to be able to lend this loving hand to the ones in pain and in need. We don't need leaders anymore. We are the new leaders. We are the new leaders because we lead by example. We show that it is possible to create this new society, to create this new reality. And by doing so, we also say to every human being 
to use his free will and to become a master of his own destiny. So these times of great changes are at the same time very exciting because unprecedented in the history of, of humanity. And also um, for some of us it can be quite anxiety inducing. So just let, let's remember what Buddhists say. Uh, in life there is only one constant and it is change. And therefore change can only be positive because it is expansion of our consciousness towards the infinite. Satnam. Thank you.